Hi, my name is Rod Arroyo, and I would like to share with you some of my images of the city of Detroit. This was originally given as a Pachacacha session at the Michigan Association of Planning's annual conference. This is really a story of a city that keeps fighting even when it seems to be down for the count. This year we celebrate the 200th anniversary of the War of 1812, where Detroit became the only major U.S. city to surrender to a foreign power. The British and the Native Americans teamed up together to fool Commander General Hull into thinking he was outnumbered. He surrendered. He was ultimately tried um, in a court-martial and was sentenced to death for treason, but President Madison commuted his sentence. The good news is this led the way ultimately for Lewis Cass to become governor of the territory and accomplish many great things for the state as well as for Detroit. I also want to talk about the influence of the Chicago Columbian Exposition in 1893 on Detroit. It launched the City Beautiful movement and that made its way into a number of different cities. In the case of Detroit, we have the first building, which is the Detroit Public Library, which was designed by Cass Gilbert. This Renaissance Revival structure opened in 1921. Uh, the second building in the uh, Detroit Cultural Center that was built was the Detroit Institute of Arts. A marvelous Renaissance-style building that opened in 1927. Publisher James Scripps proposed this after a trip to Europe. Today it's the sixth largest art gallery in the United States. This is the third building, the Rackham Memorial Education Building, um, honoring Horace Rackham, who was a philanthropist. He was Henry Ford's attorney. He also donated the land for the Detroit Zoo and also was very generous to the University of Michigan graduate programs. This is the Masonic Temple Theater, the largest Masonic Temple in the world with over a thousand rooms. It has hosted Jimi Hendrix, the Rolling Stones, the Who. It seats about 4,400 people. Immediately next door is the Scottish Rite Theater. This seats about 1,500. Recently Jack White played here. Um, he and his, and his various groups have played here many times over the years. He's been a big supporter of this building and of this complex. I want to talk a little bit about religious inspired architecture. This is the Commandery Chapel that's located within the Masonic Temple. This is a very popular place for weddings within the city. This is the first congregational church at Forest and Woodward. Originally, this congregation was established in 1844 and became a stop on the Underground Railroad. This building was built in 1891, designed by John Faxon of Boston, um, and now the Underground Railroad Museum is found within the basement of the structure. This is St. Albertus Church. This is the mother church of Polish Catholics in Detroit, dedicated in 1895 to serve um, Polish Catholics coming over from Poland after the Civil War. It seats 2,500 people. This is a view from the balcony. It was closed in 1990 but is now being maintained by a nonprofit organization that keeps the building alive. Um, shortly after this building was dedicated, its priest, Father Kolosinski, um, was removed. He left the city. He ultimately came back and started a new church, Sweetest Heart of Mary, which we see here. This building was dedicated in 1893 had 4,000 families. Eventually Rome ordered Bishop Foley to make peace with Father Kolosinski and this church was dedicated as a Catholic church in 1894. It also happens to contain some incredible stained glass within the nave. These are 60 feet tall by 30 feet wide designed by Detroit Stained Glass Works. They won several prizes at the World Columbian Exposition for these pieces of art. St. Hyacinth is another uh, Catholic church within Detroit's Pole Town. It was founded in 1907 as a congregation. This building um, was dedicated in 1924 to serve the growing Polish Catholic population, particularly coming from St. Albertus. Um, this is another view of St. Hyacinth, Hyacinth Church congregation um, within Detroit's Pole Town. This is the Roland Cafe within the Guardian Building, one of the most spectacular structures in downtown. Opened in 1929 when Detroit was a boom town, making over 5 million vehicles a year. The Union Trust Company built this Cathedral of Finance, as it was known, um, and Wirt Roland was the architect, and here you see the Roland Cafe that is named after him. This is the Fisher Theater, which is a jewel designed by um, architect Albert Kahn of Detroit. This is considered to be one of his greatest achievements. Originally planned to have three towers, only one was built due to the Depression. Um, this is another Albert Kahn jewel, the Belle Isle Aquarium, which opened in 1904 and was the, the longest continually operating public aquarium in North America when it closed in 2005, but good news is it's reopened in 2012 thanks to volunteers. 
Detroit has been known as Bike City USA. Um, basically, the, the invention of the air inflated tire in 1888 enabled bicycling to take off in Detroit. And in fact, by 1890, bicycles in Detroit were causing as much, if not more, congestion than any other source of traffic. Interesting, although Detroit's overall population has dropped, downtown Detroit has experienced a 59% increase in the number of college-educated residents under the age of 35. Many of those are fueling the bike movement. You have Tour de Trois, which had 5,000 participants this year. A lot of great things happening downtown. Another thing is the De Quinter Cut, which connects the Detroit River Walk to Eastern Market. This 1.3-mile greenway is going to be expanded to um, over the next few years through a grant into Hamtramck. The Globe Trading um, building you see on the right is going to be transformed into an educational um, and um, adventure uh, DNR based uh, uh, location. Um, this was the where Henry Ford uh, served his apprenticeship. And then finally we have Comerica Park, home of the Detroit Tigers. This is a blend of 21 photographs taken on opening day 2012. So you can see a lot happening over about a five minute period. Um, this is a spectacular jewel within downtown Detroit. I'm really happy to share these images with you. I'm a city planner. Here's my website, and I'm also a photographer. You can find my books on Amazon.com. Thank you very much.